So I searched the internet for the cheapest Radeon 6700 you can buy. And I got one for the whopping price of $240. That's not tremendously cheaper than the other options. I mean, the next cheapest one you're looking at is maybe 260 um, for a reputable brand that's, I mean, all these are reputable brands. So maybe, you know, for a reputable brand, you're looking at 270 for a nice card. It's not anything crazy. It's 20 bucks cheaper, um, but it is by far the cheapest. So this is from a company called 51 Risk, which if you're unfamiliar, there's lots of, uh, we'll just say okay reviews to say the least. A lot of these is talking about how there is some issues with, you know, drivers, uh, this being a mobile card, uh, viruses in the drivers, things like that that are pretty egregious. So also I should point out that this is not the original listing that I purchased from. And you're going, oh, well, why do I say that? Well, I originally got it from Newegg, but there's one problem. I think Newegg had enough of them too, because when you go to their store, you can shop by category. Um, they're only selling mini PCs now, which by on its own is not entirely bad. I mean, they're a little egregiously priced, but if you click on any of these graphics cards, you're greeted by a wonderful screen. So it looks like Newegg kind of took care of that, as in like they really didn't want to have anything to do with um, like all of these comes up with that these pages are taken down. So after that conclusion, one can say that probably this is um, also, it's not Risk 51 it's called Shelly now, um, which is also very interesting. It's been open for a bit. Um, let's take a look. So the first thing that you're going to notice is, other than this graphics card, it looks pretty normal. I mean, you can't see any serial numbers from the top here which is also not a good sign because usually when somebody, when a company is doing something sketchy and they put like a serial number uh, anywhere, then like AMD or NVIDIA can look at that and then track that where that card's been down. All like these engineering samples or all cards have like a serial number that's tracked. So even with engineering samples, you're looking at maybe like that stuff's tracked up the wazoo. Um, if that stuff shows up somewhere, it's not. If an engineering sample of something that's unreleased or has been released shows up somewhere, like on eBay, that shouldn't, um, that gets tracked, then whoever was distributed the engineering sample gets, like, tracked down. So, in this example, of course, this is probably a released product, but still, that has a trace to figure out who did it. So, if, if there's this company is selling them, you know, selling these cards and they're not what they're promised to be, then wherever they're getting them from, it's going to get found out pretty quickly. I mean, honestly, though, it doesn't look like anything's too crazy here. It looks like most of them have two connectors. This is, yeah, they look like they all have two connectors. So I would be a little hard-pressed, a little worried, but um, other than that, it looks like normal, except it's got one connector. Now, the thing that really concerns me, though, is the fact that, again, the sub-vendor is blocked out, so they want to make sure that whoever they're getting these from uh, doesn't get in trouble for them taking them, which, again... Going back to the, you know, removing the, the serial number is questionable because they're again trying to prevent AMD from finding out who's supplying them. Scrolling down here, um, this video card has a chip on the laptop side and requires a special driver. Um, making me a little concerned now, as again, this is what happened in this wonderful video by Craft Computing. Uh, basically, he bought a 720 or 3070 Ti M mobile version. They had to jerry rig the drivers and there was viruses in the drivers. So in order for this to work, they had to get a very special driver. Um, so this will provide a USB flash disk, which is again, probably gonna be an interesting conversation. You should record the video when you get the package. Oh, great. So not only that implies that they're having issues with things disappearing in the process of getting them to the consumer, whether or not that's in the factory or shipping, usually shipping things don't get like broken into that often. So it might be an issue factory side. Our products have a warrant. Oh boy, the usual, don't give us a bad review unless you've, you know, contacted us. This is basically, don't give us a bad review or it's, we promise we'll work with you. Um, the graphics card is a reassembled graphics card after the mining chip is removed. The graphics card is a reassembled graphics card after the mining chip is removed. So you can't, is this like a card without the like GPU part of the graphics card? Because the GPU, the graphics processing unit and the graphics card are two separate things. You have the PCB and then the processing unit goes, goes on the PCB. So for 
this to be a mining chip that's removed, do they like replace this? After the test function intact, it has a two year warranty. If you do not mine it as brand new, please buy with caution. So it's not brand new, it's a mined on GPU. So I think we are ready to go through and get this. Looks like they're selling a bunch of graphics cards, a lot of graphics cards from here. And um, yeah, it looks like they've copied and pasted the same thing. So I guess let's go through and buy it. So we have it here. So uh, let's open it up real quick and uh, take a look. So looks like all you get, of course, is just the, uh, you know, a box. This box, as I'd say, is a little nicer than what the 3070 came in. And of course, you get all the standard stuff that you get with a normal graphics card. So this isn't anything crazy. Um, right away, I definitely noticed that this cooler is uh, a uh, very plasticky cheap, thin, um, then again for the cheapest, uh, RX 6700, um, yeah, I don't see anything too crazy, it's interesting that the, the, the aluminum cooler looks like it's a, it's a treated slash painted, uh, yeah, it's definitely treated slash painted, uh, at least with a clear coat or something, um, to prevent rust, so the aluminum cooler is treated nicely, um, but I think the trade-off, of course, is that then you don't have a back plate. Um, I actually find also that you, there's a lot of holes on here that aren't being used. They really just got the holes here. Um, they've got a whole bunch of other holes. So this is probably just a very stock card that has just been reused and kind of rebranded, um, per se. Very likely why it's so cheap, actually, is probably just because they've reused it. Um, I'm definitely noticing, though, that it's, like, seems rather normal. Um... I like, there's nothing in here that indicates this is like a, a fake wish card also. Um, I'm just taking a look at this and I find that this is pretty solid all around the board. But again, I think backplates are really important nowadays when these cards start getting so expensive um, that, you know, if you knock off one of these capacitors, resistors, etc. on the back, um, not everyone has the capability to fix it. And then also, um, a fair bit of times you just like have them like fall off and then you can't really do anything about it um if you lose it so that's just a whole nother situation too some of these are power um power buffering but after that uh there's a fair bit of stuff that's probably very important um but on honestly nothing as i said nothing in here that makes me question um how the, the legitimacy of this card yeah so i think the next strategy is just going to be getting it testing it see how well it plays some games take a look at like gpu z or something and see what that looks like underneath there be curious to see if it's anything different than what it's advertised. So first things first is I actually had a friend come over and we set this up in his computer uh, in the process of actually upgrading currently what he has. And uh, yeah, basically we just wanted to go through and test this out in the machine. Actually currently all my stuff's occupied. So we threw this in his desktop here and uh, we're gonna give it a try booting it up. So of course, you know, we have to dust it off too. Wouldn't be a good friend without you know, cleaning things off. And then after which we were all ready to go. Um, I actually was able to get Windows to boot, so at least it's a at least has functioning output graphics. Um, but for the most part, yeah, it looks pretty normal. It, at least the fans turn on. Um, at least the, well, the fans turn on most of the time. Um, sometimes they stay off, which is also something you usually find in higher end graphics cards. But anyway, also upgraded some of his hardware too. Gave him a little bit of an upgrade as well. We were also able to get the graphics drivers to at least recognize that it had a 6700 in it. Um, also, the Windows Device Manager recognized it as well, which usually means that it at least is somewhat functional. Now, a lot of what I'm curious about, though, is kind of what sub-vendor is letting this company have these cards, and if there's any surprises there um, as well. So, I got uh, MSI Afterburner up here, and I basically didn't overclock it, but I just tested the fans. So, we tested with both, you know, the full speed on the fans, and then also the absolute lowest speed. And this basically kind of just ensuring that this is a functional card. Some of the cheaper end cards will just basically put a standard fan controller on there and set it at a certain stock voltage, and it just won't do anything with the different temperatures. So I wanted to make sure that was at least going to happen too. Also, nothing out of the ordinary in terms of like wattage. This has a, actually a really low GPU power draw, um, especially for idle. So I was actually kind of interested to see how that would play out. Um, but overall, also saying the GPU clock is zero megahertz and GPU load of zero. So obviously the GPU clock is not zero, um, which means that this is, you know, looking a little sus already. 
Um, but it is, looks like, at least somewhat normal. A GP voltage of zero volts is also not particularly good as well. So it looks like just these sensors are not up to par. And then finally taking a look at it, to answer what was underneath the black box, it's a power color graphics card. And there is the device ID. So from whatever company, AMD, that wants to take a look at this and figure out and track this down where this is going, that's the actual device ID. Um, you can take a look at it. It does look like it has everything that it's promised, but it's just a rebranded power color card. Nothing wrong per se here. And overall, a pretty solid card that I was able to give to my friend. However, always buy with caution, and thanks for watching.